Good evening, friends. Good evening. And welcome to Walmart Spiritualist Church on this rather blustery day. I thought spring had arrived. <laughs> oh, teach me to think, won't it? <laughs> um, before we start, I'd just like to raise the vibrations a little bit. I had an email from a very dear friend of mine today, and uh, I thought it was rather good. I'd rather like to read it to you. Says a successful rancher died and left everything to his devoted wife. She was a very good looking woman and determined to keep the ranch, but knew very little about ranching. So she decided to place an ad in the newspaper for a ranch hand. Two cowboys applied for the job. One was gay and the other was a drunk. She thought long and hard about it and when no one else applied, she decided to hire the gay guy, figuring it would be safer to have him around at the house than the drunk. He proved to be a hard worker who put in long hours every day and knew a lot about ranching. For weeks the two of them worked, the ranch was doing very well. Then one day the rancher's wife said to the hired hand, You've done a really good job and the ranch looks great. You should go into town and kick up your heels. The hired hand readily agreed and went into town one Saturday night. One o'clock came, however, and he didn't return. Two o'clock, no hired hand. Finally, he returned around 2.30 and upon entering the room, he found the rancher's widow sitting by the fireplace with a glass of wine waiting for him. She quietly called him over to her. Unbutton my blouse and take it off, she said. Trembling, he did as she directed. Now take off my boots, he did as she was asked ever so slowly. Now take off my stockings, he removed each gently and placed them neatly by her boots. Now take off my skirt, he slowly unbuttoned it, constantly watching her eyes in the firelight. Now take off my bra. Again, with trembling hands, he did as he was told and dropped it to the floor. Then she looked at him and said, If you ever wear my clothes into town again, you're fired. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming, did you? Neither did I when I first read well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome this weekend a gentleman who served our church a couple of times before. And uh, the first time he came down here, everybody said, Les who? But after he'd worked here, they knew who he was. He comes all the way from Darlington, where he is president of the Darlington Church. And uh, we've known Les for quite some time, because we usually meet at a conference and uh, have some fun. He's a great worker for spirit, and I'm sure that those that have seen him this weekend have thoroughly enjoyed him. So, would you give a nice, warm welcome, please, to Les Henderson. I'd like to now ask Les to open the evening in prayer. <coughs> Good evening, friends. Good evening. Can I ask if we can join together this evening in prayer, and let each and every one of us let's blend together in loving harmony this evening. And let's open up our hearts and our minds and let us, tonight, let us invite our friends, our loved ones and our inspirers from the spirit world to be a part of this service. And it is with that invite that we extend that love and that light from within our physical and our spiritual beings to those who have taken their transition to the spirit world. And we ask this evening that our loved ones draw forward and bring forward messages of love and comfort, times and memories that they shared with us upon this, the physical world, and allow this vessel to be used as that vocal cord between the world of the spirit and the world of the physical. We ask this evening that the energy may be generated and created of linking our two worlds together as one. That the spirit world will manifest that energy and will enable proof of survival of life after physical death to take place tonight. Asking that we may touch the hearts and souls 
of every individual in this room this evening, proving that life is eternal. As we go forward into this service, we ask that the conditions be created and generated of doing such a task. And we leave this service in thy care and thy keeping. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lair. Uh, before we go into the address, for those of you who are new to Spiritism, I'd like to reach out that hand of friendship to you if it's your first visit to our church. We don't have any creed or dogma in Spiritism, but we do have seven principles which were given to us through the transmediumship of Emma Harding's Britain, given from Spirit by Robert Owen, that great socialist and founder of the Cooperative Movement. They're in the picture frame on the wall to your right hand side. And I'd just like to go over them quickly. Number one is the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the communion of spirits and the ministry of angels, the continuous existence of the human soul, personal responsibility, compensation and retribution hereafter for all the good and evil deeds done on earth, and eternal progress open to every human soul. That's our seven principles upon which the philosophy of spiritualism is built. And now we come to the part of the evening that I always enjoy, and that is the spiritual address. And I know that uh, you're as anxious to hear this as I am, so with his address, may I leave you in the capable hands of Les Henderson. Thank you. Brother presiding friends, good evening. Once again, it's a pleasure to be um, able to stand upon the platform, uh, once again at Bournemouth Church. And um, can I, um, this evening, what I want to um, talk about, or feel as if I want to be inspired about, um, is I touched upon it yesterday, well, last night when I was in, in church in part of the address. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you and go over exactly what I went through last night. Uh, no way. But... Um, and I just feel as if, because it's more of a relaxed atmosphere tonight, isn't it? Do you not think? Yes. Yeah? These are all chilled out, aren't you? Oh, definitely. Definitely, yes, definitely so. And what I um, touched upon was um, people's strange and, I'm going to say, wacky ideas of certain things involved in spiritualism. And this is my belief, and this is, this is what I feel. But if you agree, by all means, I'm pleased. And if you don't, well... I'm sorry, I apologise for that, but this is, this is how, how I feel, and um, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about spiritualism, and about um, actually what happens to us when we, we do leave this physical world, and last night I touched upon um, people who um, are supposedly lost souls. Now... Um, I firmly believe, and I'm going to repeat this, that I firmly believe that you can't be a lost soul. Don't believe that you can be, right? For one reason is, when we leave the physical world and when we go back to the spirit world, we are met by our loved ones. Would we all agree? Yeah? That's what happens to us, doesn't it? We are told that our loved ones, or our guides, or whoever, come to meet us, right? come to meet us and we've had many people who've come back from um, say NDEs, near death experiences, who've, who've said that a loved one came and said go back, your time is not right. So if a loved one comes to collect us then why on earth would we go no I don't want to go, I want to stay, I want to hang around here, right? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for the simple reason that um, this world that we live in, and probably the majority of us agree, it's not a very good world sometimes, is it? No? no. It's not. There's um, a tremendous amount of, of, um, of pain, there's a lot of suffering, there's a lot of violence. Um, and, as the, and, and probably as, uh, and even now as, um, at my age, yeah? <laughs> um, I, as I look back on, on life, and I, I was like, I always remember that we always used to leave our front door open. Right? And I'm only 39, yeah, on Thursday, you must add. Um, and I do know that nowadays you, it's just not possible to do that. But if you go back 50 years ago, um, or even 60, 70 years ago, the world, and it was a safer place, wasn't it? It was a far more safer place. We didn't have the violence and the drugs and, um, uh, and 
the other things that go in uh, this debauchery life that we lead. Um, what we did have is we had things that were extremely extremely safe and we felt comfortable, right? And I can't understand why someone would want to stay around this, this energy, around this place, because um, they say that they have become a lost soul. Maybe we might want to hang around a little bit because we maybe haven't realised that we've passed over to the spirit world, but I don't believe that we could ever be a lost soul. And <clears throat> in spiritualism, we have... Um, Outside of the, the spiritualist sort of remit, we have people who maybe sit in rescue circles, people who um, believe that they are, and I, I say this, believe that they are um, rescuing lost souls. Um, and maybe that's their belief and their feel that. But I believe in spiritualism, we need to place common sense. Because I believe that we should be healthy sceptics. I definitely saw, even when we're receiving a message, a communication from someone in the spirit world, we should be skeptical in a healthy sense. And that is for the simple reason is that not all that what the medium says is true, or not what all the medium says is correct, because it's the medium's interpretation. Now, I could pass a message to this gentleman at the front, give him a sentence, and he could pass it along. But by the time it comes to the, the end of the, of the hall, um, the lady in the far corner might say, completely different to what has started off at the, big, at the front of the church. And that also sometimes has a lot to do with how the medium interprets what the message that, that we receive from the spirit world. There's also um, a lot of, uh, I'm going to say, um, misconceptions that um, spiritualists do it in the dark, yeah? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us might, yeah? <laughs> but, excuse me a moment, but what I do know is that <clears throat> you don't need to be in the dark to communicate, right? You don't need to be sat with your, your legs crossed um, uncross, should I say, and arms unfolded to receive a communication from the spirit world. Spirit will try and get a message and a communication to us at any given opportunity. They will use any opportunity whatsoever to get a message across. And what? And when we say message across, they're trying just to show us and just prove to us in some slight way that they are still alive. And I talk about being alive because I don't believe there's any such thing as death in itself. Yes, of the physical body, but that spirit and that soul that's encased in, it, in this body will live on, does live on, and does go on. And we term the spirit world. Many religions and organisations have different um, terminology. But in spiritualism, I believe that we are very grounded, well, the majority of us are, very grounded that, and we should look at spiritualism in a very simplistic way because there's nothing fancy and magical and um, mystical about spiritualism and spirit communication because spirit communication has been going on since the dawn of time. There's always been someone listening to a God or receiving a message from a God. You just have to look at Moses when he received the message from the God. You just have to look at Noah when he received and even Jesus himself was, I, I believe, one of the finest mediums that did walk the physical world. He was able to heal the sick, he was able to comfort the grieving widow, and each, he started a change. And I believe, and I know that the early part of Christianity, what Jesus was trying to establish and follow, very much so told people and demonstrated communication with the spirit world. And for some reason, it's been pushed by the side. Now, I believe that many, whether there's a conspiracy against spiritualism, which I believe there's one been going on for many, many years, that try and belittle this religion to make it look foolish so no one will want to be a part of it. Because other organisations and religions are asking you to give 40% of your wages, yeah? Um, I mean... If you want to give 40% of your wages to this church, by all means, feel free. Yeah? <laughs> Just fill in the direct debit form, it's on the side. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to say, but there is, um, and, and within these religions, they try and 
put fear into the people who follow it. If you don't behave a certain way, you will, um, this will happen to you. If, you. if you don't give a certain amount to your church, right, uh, such and such event will take place. Does spiritualism do that? No, it doesn't. What does spiritualism do? It tells you to think for yourselves. Spiritualism, like Safa Kunan Dole said, is the thinking man's religion. And that's what it is. And that's why I know that organisations have tried to make spiritualism look silly. And they've done a darn good job. They've done a darn good job by doing that. Because we aren't represented at the cenotaph when we've petitioned and we've tried so much. Unfortunately, at our church um, up in Darlington, we, we are we invited every year to go to the cenotaph. And that's something that we feel quite proud of that we've managed to achieve, yeah? But that's because we slipped the councillor at 100 pounds. No, we never. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we never. <laughs> I'm going to say it to you, but that's quite, we, were, we were invited. But that's, 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 um, that's our, our look there. But, and why I believe that organisations have tried to make us um, <clears throat> not grow and expand because our movement from 150 years ago right to the present day what it is now it should be huge this movement should be the biggest in this country and you'll probably sit there and you'll think to yourself well yeah it should be why isn't it right because to each and every one of us spirit communication in living once we die in the spirit world is common sense, isn't it? It's a natural thing. The naturalist thing, I believe, is communicating with the spirit world, and also one of the natural things is going over to the spirit world. And that's something that I believe each and every one of us have got that wonderful experience to go through. Probably we don't want to die, yeah, because we're fearful of it. But why are we fearful of it? Because over the centuries and decades and centuries, people have tried to put fear into our minds and into our beings that it's not nice over there. I can't wait to get there. Not yet, like, yeah? <laughs> but a few things to do. But I can't wait to get to the spirit world. Because I'm quite excited about what is over there. And the reason I'm excited is because I have witnessed and I've, I've shared wonderful experiences right through um, my work as a, as a medium but also through watching other mediums work watching healers work um, i've seen and witnessed the most remarkable things that no one on this earth can say to me that the spirit world is not there now those of us in here this evening who were fortunate to have seen spirit and i just don't mean clairvoyantly i mean objectively Objectively, whether we've sat in a physical circle or whether we've seen objectively in our own home, a spirit person manifests themselves so we can see with a physical eye. And that in itself is an amazing thing to happen to us. Those of us who have sensed or seen or even received a communication where we will say without a shadow of a doubt that that was my loved one, that in itself is a wonderment. It's an amazing experience. And there's the majority of people out there try and poo-poo what we do. They try and make it out as if it's all in our imagination. Now, have we got good imaginations? Everyone has, haven't we? Yeah? But we have received and we do receive proof time after time after time. And we know within ourselves that it's not our active imagination. We sometimes, and I do believe, we should question whether or not it is our imagination. And that's why I also believe very strongly that if something feels right, then it is right. And what you might be your opinion now and you might experience at this moment in time doesn't necessarily mean you will still have that opinion in five years. Because I feel in spiritualism, what happens is we come into 
into the movement and we're full of ideas and we get bombarded with you've got a spirit guide who's a red Indian, you've got a sister of mercy, um, you're going to be a medium, you're going to be a healer, um, be careful that you close down because if you don't you'll be walking around wide open and you can be psychic attacked and people come out with the most ludicrous things and I'm going to say that um, it's absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy that you can apparently walk around with your chakras wide open and you will, uh, and people will be, you have psychic vampires on you. You know what I mean? I, I once had a, a friend who was at a, um, a, a spiritualist church. I'll be careful not to mention names. <laughs> at a, um, and she was told, it was the first time she went. And she was told by a medium there that they was... Um, but she said attachments to an auric field and they were sucking the living energy out of her, right? And that's why she felt tired. So she was absolutely petrified, right? And she had this image that slugs were all over her, right? All over it, <laughs> sucking the living daylights out of her, right? Um, so, she was, so I went to the church where this medium was, and I said, why on earth have you, have you, have you, give her, have you told her this? It's absolutely crazy. Oh, she's got, she's got spirit, um, psychic vampires. There's no such thing as psychic vampire. No way. You've got people who maybe can, who are draining and draw, draw energy from you, but we all come across people who make us feel tired, don't we? Do you know what I mean? People wear you out. Simple as that. And what I did say to her, I said, it's nothing at all to do with psychic vampires. She turned out, well, out she had a thyroid problem. Simple as that. That's why she was feeling tired, right? And that's why I mean that people have some really strange ideas about the, I'm going to say, the other sides to spiritualism. And I believe that we should always keep a level head. Now, you all look level-headed, don't you? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Apart from you, 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 no, no, you can no, no. I'm going to say that when, and I just said that we need to take this common sense approach because spiritualism, basically, the foundation of it is plain common sense. It's plain common sense. If you can adopt that to spiritualism and hopefully we will start to give off the right signals. We'll start to give off the right signals so we do start attracting more people into our churches that we do tr start attracting more people into our movement. Even if they don't come into the church, surely let us educate them in, in a sense that they can use the basic spiritualism foundations in their day-to-day -day lives. It's like now you can go to see a Reiki master and you can pay £200 and in a day you become a Reiki healer. Right? Um, does it take two hundred pounds to become a Reiki healer? Don't think so. Yeah, you can get it done for free. But I'm going to say to you, healing is given naturally, and all it is is attunement to the spirit world and giving off that um, that energy and allowing it yourself to be used as the medium. And it's no different to communicating with the spirit world. It's a mediumistic thing, and that mediumistic ability is whether you've got it or you haven't. Simple as that. Don't bother paying £200 for someone to lay the hands all over you and say to you, you now are a Reiki master. But by the way, I do believe Reiki healing works because I've experienced it and I've had it. A friend of mine is a Reiki healer, but she didn't pay £200 to become one. Right? And that's where I believe where we let our religion and our movement down because there's these people on the peripheral who will try and seize an opportunity and make some money out of it and there's nothing we can do about it because through the dawning of time we've always had people making the most out of well most opportunities whatever they can out of spiritualism or I'm gonna say spiritism because that's what I feel we need to not necessarily rebrand our movement and our religion but what I feel we need to do is we need to take two steps back, look at spiritualism and look at ourselves because we are spiritualism. We are the movement that we class ourselves to be in. We should take a step back, look at it and try and put a common sense approach in. And let's start 
putting spiritualism where it should be. Not being mocked and laughed at by the academics because through our, um, I'm going to say through our lack of education, our lack of ignorance, or I'm going to say our stupidity sometimes by thinking that someone could tell us that we have psychic vampires in our auric field and we believe it, yeah? How about people saying that when, oh, I'm being psychic attacked by this person, that person, that person. I've never ever protected myself spiritually, psychically whatsoever because I know I work with light. I work with love. I've never felt the need to do that. There maybe might be some in you here this evening who have. I never have, so I can only talk about my own experience. But I'm going to say, if you're not giving out negative energy um, or bad thoughts to people, then you're not going to retract it, are you? Because what you give out, you get back. And that just doesn't include in spiritualism. That's the law of cause and effect, which this world works on. So I'm going to say that next time someone says to you, are you a spiritualist, are you going to say yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes? yes. Right. If you're going to say no, so be it. But can I say to you, try and invite someone into spiritualism. I don't mean go out and try and convert or knock on people's doors. But this evening, if each and every one of us in here tonight would have brought somebody with us, this church would have been, obviously, twice as full. <laughs> no, no guess for that one, yeah? But what it would have been also, it also would have been able to give people an insight who've never been to a spiritualist church of what really goes on. Because people will walk by, people will judge spiritualism, but they don't have the faintest idea of what spiritualism is. We know it was one of the <clears throat> second religions to go through an act of parliament to be recognised as a religion. And that's something that I feel we should be proud of because there's a lot of other religions there that have just popped up and appeared but haven't got, I'm going to say, the credibility that spiritualism started out with. But that credibility, I believe, has gone. And I believe it's now time that we put the credibility back into spiritualism and we try to get rid of the silly myths and misconceptions of what our movement is bombarded with. These people who believe that they can be shapeshifters, yeah, who can change any form whatsoever, come off it. <laughs> Let's have a reality check. Yeah? Let's be realistic about what spiritualism is. Spiritualism is based on one thing, and that is, the truth is that we cannot, not, and we cannot, and we do not, and we will not die. Yes, the physical body might be placed to one side, but that spirit and that soul inside of us will never, ever be destroyed. Now, when we talk about a broken heart, or we've got, we, we're emotionally down, Straight away, do we think of that living organ, yeah, that's pumping, yeah? We think that's our, that's our, but where his is that emotion and that love? It's somewhere in here, isn't it? It's not in a specific part of the body, it's somewhere in this being. And I believe that's that spirit being that is within there. And all I want to say is that if we intend to proven to make sure that people will sit up and listen to what spiritualism is. We need to be the ones who are at the forefront and pushing it forward. You, the congregation, not the mediums, not the, the presidents of the church, the committee. You, because as I say, you are the backbone of this movement. And it's up to us to make sure people Stand up and listen to what we've got to say. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Les. I think you've really given us something to think about tonight. That was a wonderful address. I understand where you're coming from when you say you can tell somebody something and by the time it reaches the back of the room, it's totally different. It's like the, um, the soldiers in the trenches in World War I and uh, the... The man in charge, the sergeant major, said to pass this message along the line. Send reinforcements. We're going to advance. 
and by the time we got to the end of the trenches, it was sent to be in four months, we're going to the dance. So, um, it does change, doesn't it? Well, now it's your turn to ask questions, and I'm sure that you've got all your questions ready. So who's going to be the first one to dig into the knowledge of Les's, uh, well, dig into his knowledge, I should say. It's the lovely Tina. Tina. <coughs> Thank you, Cancer. Um, Les, you were talking about the things that people read and, and the, the, the weird stuff that they read about, um, about uh, spiritualism. Um, I'm just wondering where you come from on the subject of um, um, poltergeists. Right. <clears throat> um, I do believe that poltergeist activity does, does exist, right? But I do believe it's not a spirit um, energy, it's a, a psychic energy, right? Um, and I believe that um, it's created um, through um, energy that's maybe uh, by um, adolescents or um, in, in, in that sense. I, I don't be and I don't believe it's a spirit that's trapped. I believe it's um, it's energy that is created on a psychic level. Does that make sense to you? That that's 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 my stance, and that's what I believe. Yes. Can I just come back to that because I was involved in it in um, um, the, the situation in 1980. Um, it was a big one. It was all the all the papers, all the Sunday papers, the local papers, uh, etc. And um, there were actually things moving, you know, I saw a lot of things move and, and um, levitate and turn over, etc, etc. Um, and there was a teenage girl in the house. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there was also a young boy in the house. Uh, I was a social worker and he was my, um, my client. And unfortunately, it got to the um, ears of the press that it was a little boy that was at the centre of it, which made things very, very difficult. Um, but in fact, um, we held a rescue seance. Um, somebody who was a very, very um, good healer. Um, he was also a, a, a physical medium um, and a, a deep trance medium. And he let this this entity come through. And this kind of the entity came through blaspheming, you know, using all the language God made sort of thing. And I was really worried that he was going to go on a rampage or something like that. But in fact, we talked him down. We told him to look for the lights that he would see somebody that, that he would know. And his last very soft words were, oh, it's grandma. And off he went. And there was no more trouble in the house. Right, OK. So, so I, I've actually been involved in a lot of um, <coughs> rescues. And I know that a lot of people do me now. Don't believe it. <laughs> um, but I didn't do, didn't do it. Who, who was um, doing the blasphemy? Was that the trans? Was that the medium? That, that was... That or, did you hear ob or did you hear it objectively? The, 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 um, did you hear the, the voices objectively? Or were they coming via the medium? They were, they were coming through the media. The media would have been taken off and the, um, the, the uh, entity had taken over his body. And was okay. Through him. Right. <clears throat> I, I'm not disputing that, that that occurred or that happened, but what I do, um, what, I, what, I, I would, I would, what I feel is that um, that it could could have been the, um, the an impression of a, of a spirit impressing, because you do get bad spirits as well as good spirits. Could have been impressing the trans medium um, to blaspheme, or it could even have been a part of that medium subconscious. I'm not doubting the, the genuineness. Of, of the of, of the gentleman um, or lady, whoever it were, whichever it was. But what I do do feel is that um, it it could have been um, six of six and a half, half dozen of the other. Um, I know that poltergeist activity has, and I've witnessed poltergeist activity. I've been to a, to a house where um, there was poltergeist activity, and um, <clears throat> we found out that it was the young girl who was. I mean, I've seen the books fly across across the room, and found out it was the young girl who was causing this um, due to. Um, pent up psychic energy. Yes. When we're going from um, adolescence, when we're going into puberty, um, we, we do become very, very psychic. Um, and this girl was just, it was just a little bit uncontrollable, this experience that I witnessed. And um, once we understood exactly how she, how, she, how it was occurring and what was, what, why it was happening, then the, the poltergeist activity went completely. 
At that event, no one went into, into a trance. We just spoke to the girl, explained to her, and, and told her about psychic energy and so on and so forth. And um, within a matter of two to three days, everything seemed as it settled down. But your experience is something that you've experienced, so I can't, I, I'm not disputing it, but I'm also not going to agree with it. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah? Yeah, I mean, Les, I think you'll agree with me. You said that we have to, we have to uh, differentiate between reality and fantasy. And I remember having a gentleman bring me up one night and said that he and his partner uh, were having problems in their office, that the computers were switching on and off by themselves, the lights were going on and off by themselves, and uh, it was just really getting to them. And I said to him, was there any negativity in the office? And he said, oh, absolutely. My partner and his wife have a daughter, and uh, two or three years ago, we employed a young man into our company. We deal with computers, and he was a computer whiz kid. And he turned our company around, and we became so successful through this young boy. And he fell in love with my partner's daughter and married her. And three years after, we all thought they were the happiest couple, and three years later, he committed suicide. And my partner's daughter and the parents were devastated. And so they now blame him for everything. All of these things have started happening in the office. And I said, are they negative towards this boy's memory? And he said, oh, absolutely. So I said, well, can you talk to them at all? Because negativity attracts things like this from the spirit world. This young man was trying to get through to say, I'm sorry for what I've done. But he, nobody was taking any notice of him because there was so negative. I said, tell them to send out thoughts of love and to say, we forgive you, it doesn't matter what you've done. And I said, bring me back only if you don't have any success. And he never ever ran me back again. And you see, what happens is sometimes people will go into a building, they move into a home and they're very negative and they draw the memories of terrible things that have happened in that house to them. And you know, the imagination can be a brilliant thing Anna Gordon Smith said he was called to a house that said they had, this old lady said they had poltergeists in, hearing noises all over the house and experiencing things. He, he couldn't find any energy, negative energy at all. He went up to the attic, clapped <laughs> his hands and a load of pigeons flew out. They said, how can you differentiate between reality and, of course, fantasy? I and I love fantasy, but not that fantasy. <laughs> Next question, please. Oh, come on, you're not all shy. Gentleman at the, at the back. Yes. Come on, Dan. Um, I'd is? just like to say, um, going back to what you say about getting people into the movement, um, I do feel that um, the spiritualist movement affects a lot of people. Some people come into the church for, for reasons for help. They get help and they move on. But they don't stay at the church, but the church will make them be, they help them to be better people, and they go away and they take, they take our principles with them, and hopefully, you know, they might not come back, but they, they, it will change their lives. So I don't necessarily, I mean, Church of England, um, people go there, it's like out of habit. They don't <coughs> seem to go there because, you know, they, they're getting something really from it. I mean, people that do come here, a lot of them do need help, and they do find it. So I, yeah. I just feel, even though they're not members of the church, they still carry on and take the... I, I, I believe in, in spiritualism, we've got what, you, what I call your diehards who've been coming for decades. And you've got your drop-ins where uh, people will come in for a uh, six month, nine month course, they've, they've got a need or they're, they're, they're searching um, or they need some comfort or they're looking for answers. And um, you've got them and then they'll come and they'll, they'll, they'll be given or they should hopefully find what they're, what they're looking for. And what I would like to see is though, though they've taken from the church and they've maybe might be going back out there and um, giving the message of spiritualism across, what I would like to see is them still try and come back or try and not necessarily convert other people, but yeah, get yourself to the spiritualist church. It, it might do, do you some Just do that little bit more of promoting of spiritualism, which I feel as if we, we, we should be doing.
uh, that just out a little bit more. But I totally agree with with what you what you said. Yeah. Je there's isn't it also true that sometimes you know there's no saying a little knowledge, a lot of knowledge can be good, but a little knowledge can be dangerous. And sometimes the people that come in just come in for a short while and they go out and then they try to promote spiritual. <coughs> But they haven't got the right amount of knowledge to really, and what they're doing is putting it over in the wrong way. And often that does us more harm than good. And that's why Les is saying it's better if they come, you know, on, on a more regular basis and listen to mediums like Les and gain the knowledge, and then they can promote it in the right way rather than. We have so many people pushing spiritualism in the wrong way these days. Uh, we, I, we have a, um, the Lyceum group, uh, an awareness class that uh, I, I help take at our church. Um, we have <clears throat> people who've come in that will come for six months and then they'll, they'll decide that they're going to leave and that's it. And then you find that they uh, have started doing like private readings or they've start, opened up their own little uh, little shop doing readings and also they've started doing um, awareness classes and they're charging people like £110 to do a six week. I'll make her a medium in six weeks. Absolute nonsense. It's just not possible. And that's, that's what I believe where um, sometimes where I, I feel as if we should come to the church and, and support and gain the, gain the correct knowledge, you know what I mean? Because it's, you can't learn spiritualism in six weeks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to count how many years. Um, 19, well, no, 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 20, I can't even count that. 24, I've been, I've been involved in spiritualism 24 years now, right? And I still, <clears throat> there's things that I'm learning every time. I'll walk away from, from this weekend and I'll have learned something off someone just by a conversation in the tea room or just by speaking to someone in the, in, in the congregation. And it's, um, and it's you, you can't do it in six months. It does take, well, it takes a lifetime and then some. And I just feel we have people being, um, like, like I said, a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous sometimes. But the thing is with spiritualism is we all think we're right, don't we? Yeah, we think our way is the right way. That's and that's the problem that I feel is um, is is what we're up against. Because um, it's like uh, Tina uh, regarding um, the the rescue and what she witnessed and what she's seen. Well, to her that that's that's completely right. To me, it doesn't sit sit the same because we all have different views and opinions. But what we need to do is just learn. I want to say. Um, the, uh, try and establish the basic principles of spiritualism, and hopefully, um, we can't go far wrong. Yeah. I've got a new name for those shops. So there's Have you? Little shop of horrors. Feed me, Seymour. That the right, theme. Oh, or is it their wife, whichever mm -hmm. one's. Um, yes, we've been coming now for about eight months or so. Um, curiosity to begin with. Yeah. Then hopes of a message. <coughs> Um, I've always liked to sit and listen to the meeting because I'm really, really interested in the philosophy of what, what it's all about. And it's, to me, it's a totally uncomplicated, simple way of dealing with it. And I think this is what the main religion is frightened of. Mm. If there's it's such a simple, uncomplicated way of living, then the rest of the world are frightened of you. I'm convinced of that. I totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. There's something I wanted to ask you. Um, I've seen people, I've felt things, I've heard things, I've smelled things. I never went, I've been prepared for them. If I try to conjure somebody up, or conjure something up, I can't. But I've seen my mum, I've felt people touching me, all sorts of things have happened to me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, it's it's that old uh, saying when when uh, I can't remember which medium it was it said, um, "Oh, I'll, I'll I'll get in touch with Elvis for you," um, and <laughs> sat there trying to get in touch. We can't summon up the spirit world. Um, really, it's it's quite it's quite. Um, it's quite bizarre in a way because um, we just stand up and we, we, we open up our energy and we, we attune, our, attune ourselves to the spirit world. And it's them who, uh, who really have the upper hand. 
because we wait for them to come forward. Maybe it might have something to do with the energy needs to be right on, on their side and, um, and it's just a case of they'll see an opportunity where the energy, the, the, the timing is right and they'll seize that opportunity to let you know that, like your mum or whoever it was, to let you know that she was there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you a message from your mum. <laughs> I felt as though I was there, but no, 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 no. Okay, I, thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you've, you've, the question I'm going to ask, uh, you gave me most, most of the answer, and then when you opened that foreign address of yours, um, when you go to Spirit, hopefully, which we do, are you, do you think that you're given the choice to come back? <coughs> oh, right. <laughs> I am. Um, the, the thing I think about... about in whatever fall. <laughs> yeah, in whatever fall. Well, is it the Hindus believe what you're thinking of on the time that you pass, if you're thinking of a cow or a pig or whatever, that's what you'll come back as. Um, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like still sitting on the fence, and I've been sitting on the fence for about 15 years with reincarnation. I used to believe it when I first started, because, oh, it made sense, you were coming back to, to learn lessons. But to me, it can't be proved. Um, cause, and there's a lot of flaws in reincarnation, because the mind is a very, very complicated and fascinating thing. Um, but the amount of people who've had past life regressions, and I've had one myself, um, <clears throat> And the amount of people who have come back as Marie Antoinette, um, there's been about eight, about 65,000 people, yeah? Um, so, well, 65,000 people could have been Marie Antoinette, mm -hmm. or Henry VIII. There's the amount of people who've, who've, who've that, or, or Queen Victoria. Um, so, that puts a flaw in it for me, because I think sometimes people's imagination, maybe it's out of them 65,000 people, maybe it's one, was, Queen Victoria, as well as herself, yeah, <laughs> somehow. Um, but I'm going to say it to you, that, but I, I just can't sort of put my finger on saying, well, how can it be proved? So, and because the way I, I, I think I, I like to see some, I like to see firm evidence that can demonstrate and show me that we can come back. But then you can go into the place of to do with with soul groups. Are you part of uh, a soul group and? All of that soul group is maybe is part of that memory of of that one individual where there might be ten thousand um, souls connected to that one individual. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't, does it? Well, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Does to a certain extent. Yeah, and and you see, you've got you've got that possibility. Um, so who knows? We won't know, well, I won't personally know until I get there. But if I get there before you, yeah, um, I'll let you, I'll come back and let you know, yeah? And if you get there before me, make sure you've got me a beer ready when I get there. But there's this one, there's a, there's a, a story. Um, we, we have a relative. We have a relative who used to, they used to live in East London, where we come from, and they moved to Cornwall. And uh, after they'd moved, the couple, they had a young boy. And we went down to visit them. And this young boy, um, I was showing him some various conjuring tricks and whatnot, and he picked them up straight away. He was very, very intelligent. And they told us the story, and they had no reason to lie. They said that they were driving around the Cornwall countryside uh, when they first moved there. And my wife confirmed what I was saying, which you bet otherwise I drew right out of it. <laughs> and they got lost. They got lost. And the young boy said to his dad, he said, I'll show you the way to get home, Dad. And he did. And afterwards, they said to him, "How did you, how did you know the way to get back?" He said, "I was here before I drowned, Dad." He said, "And when the the boy's grandfather died, he he said to the family, he said, do 'Don't worry about Granddad. He'd be quite happy, and he can come back if he wants to.'" Right. 
he said it like I did. But that, and they, they, I mean, there's no reason to lie to us, but that is what we were told. Hmm. He's eight years old. Is he? He was eight years old. He's, he, well, he's about nine now. This was last year when he told us. Hmm. Um, just there was there was a documentary not so long ago on Channel Five, a very similar thing, and it was to do with uh, a young lad um, up in um, up somewhere in Barrow, I think, I think it's in Scotland, and um, he kept going on about wanting to visit this 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 farmhouse, and that's where he used to live, and all the dates, and so his mum decided, right, we'll get it out of the way because he wanted to go and see his his other mum. That's what he was saying. So they got it out of the way, so they went up, and a lot of the facts were right, apart from um, there was a couple of flaws in um, the, the time and the period that he said he was there. Um, but the majority of it was, was absolutely correct. But I, 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 was, I was, when I was watching that, and then I um, went back to a, a, a memory that I had myself, was, um, and it was going to Whitby once when I was young. And I knew exactly what was, and I was describing what would be on the road ahead, mm -hmm. uh, where a certain um, hill would be, uh, that would, there would be a certain pub, how the road would turn. Um, but I'd never been there before. But then I maybe um, questioned afterwards, and I was able to give detail about this. and. I then realised, maybe I thought to myself, well, maybe I've um, seen it clairvoyantly previously. Maybe I've astral travelled in some sense and seen it. You know what I mean? Um, maybe you see it's, or I've maybe tapped into that unconscious mind and been able to draw um, an experience or draw that information from somewhere. Because um, those. Uh, and, and there's been some great prophets and seers uh, in the past, and there still is at this moment in time, who were able to give accurate dates and details of when maybe someone will move or when someone will pass over. So you say to yourself, well, where does that information come from? That information can't come from, say, if the medium is given a, a, a sitting so it can't come from the sitter, because the sitter has no knowledge of it. It can't come from the sitter's auric field, because that information isn't there. So where's that medium? tapping into that energy and that information. And I've asked that question many times. I've sat in, in trance when I've asked the trance medium to ask, give me the answer of where that information can come from. And I've never had the answer yet, or answer that I would say sounded feasible. So if anyone knows the answer, please um, jot it down on a piece of paper and send it to Les Henderson. <laughs> Uh, let me know because I would be quite interested. I'm going to have to draw to time now because Les is driving back to uh, Darlington tonight, so I know I'm going to try and get him away by him just after 9 o'clock if we can. I would just say one thing spiritualism teaches us to think for ourselves and always have an open mind. So, you know, some of us are going to believe it, some are not. But if it sits right with you, I'm sure Les will agree. I would agree, yeah. right for you. Right. I'm going to play just a little bit of quiet music because mediums work on a different level of consciousness just so Les can just sit for a few moments and then we'll go into the demonstration of communication.
Dear friends, we come to our demonstration of communication, as I always say, if less should come to you. Yeah, well, first of all, he needs all that love, that beautiful energy of love sent him onto the platform. Because all mediums work on that power, that energy of love. Should he come to you, he really needs your voice loud and clear. Every service we say, please speak to the medium, and everybody says yes, and then they go. <laughs> And we're just going to pick you up and put you on the back of the cell of the car so you can do that all the way home. So you will speak to Les and he comes to you, won't you? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Look at that. See how long it lasts. And then, <laughs> with this demonstration of communication, I'll leave you in the capable hands of Les Henderson. All right, good evening once again. Um, <clears throat> as Al said, it is, it is important that we do hear your voice. Um, more so, it lets me know whether I'm right, because if I can't see exactly people right at the back, I know there's, I can't see the face that clearly. That's probably because I need glasses and I'm too vain to get some. Right? But I want to say to you uh, as well is that your loved ones don't come just to, to hear my voice. They come to hear you, because it's you they want to communicate with. It's you they want to talk to. So I feel as if you were st talking to um, a friend or a loved one on the telephone, you would speak to them, wouldn't you? Yeah? Yes? You would, wouldn't you? You wouldn't nod your head, shrug the shoulders, you'd say yes. And it's exactly the same, because it's like a, tele, like a telephone communication. I'm that, um, I don't know, that line, that link in between, so it's a freeway thing. It's you, me, them, them, me, you. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Does it? Good, good. Right, OK. Um, I'm very drawn to the lady right at the back of the hall. You've got a lemon... Um, uh, top on yellow, and you've got. I feel. I think you've got glasses on. Thank you. Right, okay, there. Right. Um, I'm aware of a gentleman that I need to bring forward to you from the spirit world who wants to draw close. I'm going to say to you, when I was sat down, as um, <clears throat> as I was uh, uh, attuning myself to the spirit world, this gentleman just stood very, very um, closely at the side of me. And when I looked up, and I, straight away my eyes were just fixed on yourself, so I knew it was you I wanted to connect to. And I'm going to say to you, this gentleman had a cancerous condition that took him to the spirit world okay and I'm gonna say to you as I'm linking with the gentleman I know I would have been in it was in the lower part of the of the stomach here you understand me about that he draws forward there I'm gonna say to you would be slightly taller than myself right if he was stood here in the physical now and I'm gonna say and as he links back there from the spirit world um, I want to say to you I feel very I feel like a big kid right I'm gonna say because I don't know whether he was a very well he, he seems a very jovial person okay I'm gonna say to you a bit of a, a, a bit of a prankster and would have liked um, would have liked to laugh and like to enjoy life you understand me by that because this is coming forward he's got the most beautiful smile on his face and as he smiles I'm gonna say to you I'm looking at two dimples there, right? And you, he always had them throughout his life. And I'm going to say to you, even to even to the end, he said, when he started to go very drawn in, I still had them. You understand me by that? Brings that energy and that love back to you from the spirit world. And as he brings that forward, he's making me also um, aware that that there was some problem to do with his right leg, please. Okay? You understand? Because I feel as if, whoa, I'm going over on it. As though it wasn't that strong. I've got to say to you that um, that's built back up, he tells me. And I just I don't mind it to tell you that, but he wants to, right? Because I'm going to say to you, he wants to do that. Can I uh, say to you there that would you understand why he shows me? I'm looking at, um, he must have had a sweet tooth, right? Because I'm going to say to you, um, if you know, would you understand why he shows me like a, a penny snake? No, you don't, do you? <laughs> Bizarre. Right, I didn't think you would. I'm going to say to you that uh, would you, uh, there's something, because he, he showed me like a bag of, like a, a bag of pick and mix, right? Um, does that make sense? Yeah. It does, right, okay. Now, because I'm going to say to you, I'm looking at it, and it's one of them, it's like, a, I'm looking at them pink shrimps, right? And, yeah, and I'm going to say to you, um, and he's just sort of got this bag of pick and mix, and he's, it's mine, and you're not getting hold of it. You understand me by that? I want to say, um, and it was as if he just sort of pulled the sweets out of his pocket and like that. Yes, I'm going to say to you, and you never got one, right? You never got one. He says, though, towards the end of his physical life, um, is it, that went. He didn't, he didn't want to bother with candy so much. You understand me? And everyone found it very unusual, because it was throughout his life he did like his sweets. Now, I'm going to say, as he comes back there from Spirit World, wants to um, say there to me that... Um, all right, OK, there. He says he wished they never moved him from the ward. Would you understand me by that? Yeah. Yes? Because I'm going to say to you, he says, I wanted to stay there, right? Yeah. I didn't want to be moved about. And I'm going to say to you, he asked, not begged, but he asked on more than one occasion, let me just stay here. 
Do you understand me? And I'm going to say to you, if the, anyone, the doctor on this was, oh, can I just stay here? I don't want to move. I don't want to move. He said it done me no good, right? It done me no good. But I'm going to say to you, he links back there from spirit world just to let you know that he's perfectly fine now. I'm going to say, he's put the beef back on, he tells me to tell you. You understand me about that? And I'm going to say to you, brings a tremendous amount of love there to you from the spirit world. When, oh, slow down. Mentions the month of May to me, okay, as, a, as an anniversary that links and connects. And I'm going to say to you, but I know it's a pain, right? I'm going to say to you, no, it's to come, right? Um, I want to say to you that, um, for some reason, I I'm linking to, right, you show me rather the 4th or the 14th, right? One or the other, right? Um, I want to go, actually, in between. I want to go to the 10th of May, okay? Because I'm seeing that circle very, very clearly there, uh, there with that. Can I also say to you, would you understand, right, okay? Um, I know it wasn't him, but um, who tried to um, take their own life, please, with a gun? Not sure about that one. Right. Right, okay there. Um, <clears throat> can you connect to me, please? Um, a lady who passed in uh, the first week of December. And I want to come on Mother's Vibration with this. No, you can't. Right, I'm going to have that. I'm having the gun back, right? You're not having the gun. I bet you're glad about that one, right? You're not having the gun. You're not having that. And I'm going to leave with the love that that gentleman brings. Okay, no, no, there's something else I, I want to, I need to say to you. Um, Ollie just wants to um, <laughs> say, <laughs> there you go. Um, he want, he's, he's just saying that, will you spend a penny for him? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? So I want to say to you, um, I, I don't know why, I, why he's mentioning about spending a penny. Now, I know what spending a penny means, and so do you, yeah? But I'm going to say to you, um, would you understand why he's saying that to you? Would that be so... Not really. Right. Okay, can I? Yeah, right, okay. Can I say to you, um, was there some problem to do with um, his waterworks, please? No, sorry, right. Is there anyone around at the moment who's having some problem... Right, okay. Right. Um, da, 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 da. Right. So he keeps saying spend a penny. Right? Um, and I'm assuming, um, but it might not be that. I'm going to say it to you. Um, are you need, I shouldn't be asking questions, but are you needing to spend some money on something, please? I just spent some money on Right. That's fine. Right. Okay. Can I say to you that I do, uh, okay, no, because I, I knew, because all he was saying was spending a penny, right? And I'm going to say to you that um, I would be right in saying that um, he was reluctant to spend a penny, right? I'm going to say to you, and he's just mentioning to me about spending something. Can I, can I say to you that I, I feel that it should have been, you should have spent it um, a couple of months earlier, right? You should have, um, I don't know, invested or spent it a few months earlier, he tells me, right? That's just his way, okay, sir. That's just his way of letting us know that he knows what's going on around and about you, right? Because I'm going to say to you, this gentleman is very, very close to your heart, right? And I'm going to say to you, he's very close to your side, physically and spiritually. Can I, can I say to you, next time you get the sensation where you see the white, uh, the, the white flash in the corner of your eye, which I do know you should be seeing quite a lot, if, what's that? Just yes? Can I say to you, because he tells me that he's been around you very much these last 12 days. I know that you've needed it, right? Yes, you understand me about it, and you know why he's been there, because he says to me that you keep seeing these flashes and thinking, hey, what's that? Um, I need my eyes testing. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's just the energy from the spirit world that you're aware of. Next time you get it, acknowledge him and say hello, so he knows that you're sensing him. Pick. Yeah, I do. You do. Okay, great. That's lovely. I'm going to leave that love with you, say God bless, and thanks very much for um, speaking to me. Just before I draw away there, I just heard very faintly, and maybe this might be going into my next link, does the name Terry mean anything to you, please? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because <clears throat> it was just shouted very faintly there to me. Um, and I, okay, now I'm just gonna just gonna say because I don't want to be just chucking names and shouting names. But can I just say to you that? Um, right. Okay. Um, there's a lot of love that comes from that person. Right. Yes. And I want to say to you that um, when the connection when when. I'm going to say Terry in spirit world, right? I'm going to say to you that um, just accept the love that's brought forward there. I'm, I'm not going to give you any more than that because I'm going to say to you that, that just, said, just say that, right? That's enough. You understand me by that, right? But I'm going to say to you, I know the month of March has a very strong link there, yeah. right? Because um, 
Terry wants to give you that. I, very rare that I give flowers to people, right? Not that I don't like to, but I just don't give them. I'm going to say to you, um, I just want to give you two daffodils. Right. Not a bunch, not, not one, but two. Because there's two very strong memories that you've got in the month of March. Yeah. Okay, isn't there? And I just want to give you them two memories and that love there. I'll leave that with you and say God bless. Thanks for speaking to me. Right, can I? <clears throat> can I come? Da, 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 da. Not sure where I want to be. Um, I've got a link with. Uh, um, would someone know someone who was rather who was who was shot or who was um, attempted to take their own life with a? Um, I don't know whether it's a shotgun. I know it's just know it's a gun. The, the gentleman there. You can understand that, sir. I right, okay. Can I <clears throat> can I just just say to you there? Um, and, I, and I'm, I know I should be asking a question, but um, I feel as if the person must have took your own life with this, please. Yes. Yes, okay there. All right, so I'm going to say to you that as I was, um, for some reason I've been drawn to you because I've been wanting you to ask a question, right? Um, I know you were wanting, right? I'm going to say to you, but I'm very much aware of this person coming, coming forward. Now, I don't want to go into gory details with this, but I'm going to say to you, um, sir, that um, I do feel that um, this wasn't the first attempt by this person, right? And I'm not sure whether you are aware of that or not, but I don't feel it was the first attempt. Yes, yes you understand now. I want to bring um, him forward there to you from the Spirit World, because I'm going to say to you, um, talks about um, there being, right? Um, right, okay. Some involvement, and obviously I would have been afterwards, but being some involvement with the police, Okay, right? Leading up to this, right? Now, I'm going to say to you that I feel as if it was something to do with, um, I don't know whether it was like, um, uh, or some involvement to do with a court case, something of an, on a legality, right? Something legal. So, I don't know whether it was himself or it was connected around you at that moment, at that time, when this took place. Can I ask, is this a, is this a man? Right, I'm going to say to you that, um, like yours is a lady, isn't it? Yes, it is. Right, OK. Now, can I say to you, would they, they should have been some involvement, right, to do with a gentleman and something on a legality, something legally, whether it was waiting for a court case or... or right, OK, right. Can I, can I, can I just, just say to you there, right, OK there, right, that... Um, I do want to bring a gentleman to you as well from the spirit world. Can I bring Father, please, to you? No. No, right. Can I then link... Um, well, okay. Right, okay. Can I, can I then say to you then, if it's not Father, it's rather stepfather. I'm going to say to you... No, 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 no. I'm being told it's Dad. Right, okay. Right, and I'm going to say to you that... I, would I be correct in saying that? And I don't know whether you were at the age of two or very young when Father must have... Um, fled, right? I'm going to say to you, but um, I do know that... Um, right, do you understand me by that? Yes, I do, actually. Yes, OK, there. Because I'm going to say to you, this gentleman who's coming forward just says that he fled, and I'm going to say he fled the home, right, when you're at, at, at round about that age. And I'm going to say, as he comes forward, I'm going to say to you that you've got a very strong resemblance to this gentleman, right? I'm going to say to you, as I, as I look, but I don't know how tall you are because you sat down, right? And I don't want you to stand up, but I'm going to say to you, I sense that he would be slightly taller than yourself. Is that correct? Okay. I want to bring him forward there because I'm going to say to you that I know there's a connection and that he's speaking about four other children, okay? Right? About four other children. And I'm going to say to you that as he, as he links with this, I know that there would have been some problem because... Um, I'm not saying that he was uh, an alcoholic, but I know there was a drink problem, right? I wouldn't know. Okay, well, that's, can you remember that I've mentioned this? Because it seems, it seems quite, quite important that I link and bring, and bring that forward there, because that's what he wants to, wants to bring. As he links there with this, he's just, just mentioning that. Now, I'm going to say to you, I know that you've been trying to trace part of, um, well, two sides of the family, OK? And I'm going to say to you, yeah? You understand me with that, sir? You do? I'm going to say, two sides that you've been trying to um, trace, um, 
You're gonna, oh, da, 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 this is bizarre. You're gonna um, uncover, right? Something to do with someone, right? Who was involved in a murder, right? Oh, every, everyone's gasping. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> right? I don't. I, 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 that's. I, don't, I, know, I know it's not you, right? <laughs> not me, my lord. Right? <laughs> I'm going to say to you. Um, I, I don't mind it. I don't, if you don't know, I don't. I don't mind about that. But I do know that you will find it, right? Just remember that I've, I've, I've said that. I want to bring, and that's, that's just the memory and the message that, that he wants to bring forward, but I want to say to you, he is coming, he is coming forward to saying sorry, right? He's apologizing, right? And I'm gonna say to you, whether or not you take that apology, sir, it's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna say to you, your father's waving a white flag, and I'm gonna say to you, he should have waved it 15 years earlier, okay? You understand me, I'm gonna say to you, wish he'd had it done, okay? I want to bring the, uh, the, the connection to do with the suicide with the shooting, because I'm going to say to you, right, uh, um, very frankly, now, he gives information about it being a girl, and I'm going to say to you, right, um, I know that I'm, I'm sensing that my hair was being is pulled back, right? So I'm going to say to you, oh, it was pulled back like this, and I'm going to say to you, and I know that the uh, shooting was definitely to do around the mouth area, okay, right? All I want to say to you is I just want to bring her back to you from the spirit world and she just wants to say sorry, but she wants to tell you and four other people, right, that she loves them dearly and that she's been back, right, yes, yes? yes. and that she's been back from the spirit world this evening to let you know that, okay? Please pass that message on because it's very important because there's one child who is still grieving, right? over this, so I'm going to say to you who needs to put closure on this passing, okay. Can I, can I just say to you, she has the most beautiful brown eyes, right? Beautiful eyes, and I'm going to say to you, a very much so lit up now from the spirit world. Accept that love that she brings forward there to you, sir, and know that she's, she's okay. I'm going to leave that with you and say God bless, thanks for speaking to me. And when I come back next year, please don't tell me she was done the murder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope not. Right. Right, okay. Can I, um... Draw on. I'm not sure whether it's the, um... Lady it is. Uh, I hate it when they say to me, like dark hair and glasses, and you go, everyone's got dark hair and glasses on. When they say, go to that lady in the pink, and it's like 80 people wear pink. <laughs> yeah? doesn't, doesn't do no good. I'm very much so drawn to, um, hey, the energy's just taking me here, and I want to say to you that um, I have a lady that I want to connect, and I feel as if it's the lady who's looking, well, you're all looking at me, aren't you? <laughs> Um, who's just sat behind the gentleman. Yes, yes. Okay then, right? Because um, I'm aware that the lady who comes in, I'm going to say I definitely feel on uh, <coughs> mum please in spirit world. Yes. Yes? I'm going to say to you, as I want to bring a forward there to you, can I say to you that um, we all get, we all die of lack of breath in the end, that's what takes us all, yes. but I'm going to say to you, I feel as if she struggled with her breathing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say not struggled, laboured with it. Yes. That's what she's telling me. I also do know that as she comes forward there from the spirit world, I also feel as if I've got a tremendous amount of, of pain from my top of my legs down to my, yes. down to my feet. You understand that? And I'm going to say to you as well that I know that there's a problem to do with circulation as well with her, right? Because yes. I've got a problem. Also, and I'm not sure whether she was um, diabetic, right? But I'm going to say to you, I, I definitely know there's a problem to do with... Um, a bl I've already said circulation, I'm, sorry, I'm not going to repeat myself. Problem to do was... And I don't know whether she had to... Um, was having to take blood, right? Or take yes. blood samples. But I know there was a lot, she says, I ended up being like a pin cushion. Yes. You understand me, by? 
by that, right? Yes, and I'm going to say to you, as I, as I link there with this, she also makes me um, aware of that, and I'm going to say to you, but she says, I didn't moan one bit, right? She didn't moan one bit. The personality that she brings forward, she was, um, nothing would have been too much trouble. And even if she didn't want to do something, right, she would, she would do it, and she'd maybe mutter under her own breath, right? But I'm going to say it to you, like us all. But she, she would go on and do it. I also want to say to you that as she comes back there, as I'm seeing a sort of um, build there, I'm going to say to you, would you understand why she talks about, and I don't know whether she had a fall out of the bed, right? Um, yes, yes, she did. She, she did. talks about falling out of the bed, which was a, a, a memory for you, um, and it was a memory for her because she, she hurt herself, yes. yes? I'm going to say to you, as I link to that, I'm going to say to you, I know that she must have cracked something here, right? But, when she came out yeah, when she came out the bed, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say to you, but I also do know that um, not one rib, but two ribs were, were cracked as yes. well, were broken, should I say. Now, she brings that love there to you from the spirit world, and I'm going to say to you, as well as she comes forward, she's making me uh, very much um, aware there that um, you would, uh, she talks about you being too late um, to see her. Do you understand me? And that she passed to the spirit world before you got there. Yes. But I'm going to say to you, you were only about half an hour late, right, yes. weren't you? And I'm going to say to you, but I would be correct in saying there's, does the carpenters, or the a song yes. by the carpenters, yes. it connects to you and your mum? Yes. yes? Right, because she's saying to me, and I don't know whether as you were journeying on to catch her or to see her, that a carpenter's song must have been playing, right? Yeah. Or you switch the radio on and there's a carpenter. And, and, and she's not telling me what song it is, but she's saying it's the carpenters. Yeah. Your mum says she tried to hang on for you, right? But she's apologised, she's sorry that she never, right? But know that your mum is now out of all of that pain, because I'm going to say, she says, I was really pleased to go. Yes. Yes, she was pleased to go. And I'm going to say it to you, but she, um, she died within a week of her birthday, right? Yes. Yes? Yes, she did. And she mentions um, that there to me. Also, what she wants to say to you there, as she comes back from the spirit world, that um, she, she tried to be as positive as she possibly could about a gentleman, right? Right, right I'm, I'm going to be careful here because I know these are nosy and I don't want to open it out. <laughs> <laughs> and she says to me there that, um, right, okay, I'll go, oh, be careful, right? Um, that she tried to be positive about a gentleman, right? But she couldn't forgive him, right, for what he did. Right. Right? So well, I'm going to say it to you, but not also what he did to her, what he also did to you. Yes. Yes? And she says that, um, don't worry, he's got his commitments. Right? But can I say to you, she just felt powerless. Right? Yes. She says to me that at the moment, someone is making you feel powerless. Yes. Yeah? Be strong and stand up like she should have. Yes, That's entirely up to you whether you do that. But all I want to say to you is that the personality of your mum, she was a very strong lady. Yes, she was indeed. And I'm going to say to you, very, very um, independent. But it wasn't until the last 20 years of her life. No, true. And I'm going to say to you, she could kick herself, she tells me, for not being stronger for years earlier. Yes. Know that her love is very, very strong for you this evening yes. and that she's always there around and about you. Can yes, I say to you, yes. watch for hearing very shortly a song by the Carpenters. Thank you very much. I'm going to say, um, we've only just begun. Right, I'll leave that love with you. God thank bless. You. Thank you, man. Okay, friends, on behalf of um, yourselves and the team who works who worked with us this evening, I'd like to thank you very much for allowing me to work with your loved ones. Can I just say that I felt and experienced a tremendous amount of love for the full weekend I've been in, in Bournemouth, so I'll be going home on an eye to Darlington now, <laughs> like that. <laughs> I want to say, can I just say, be happy in knowing that your loved ones don't stay in this church or with any of the mediums that grace the platform. They stay with you because they're connected to you by that one thing, which is love. God bless. Thank you.
can I thank Les on your behalf for a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend that we've had with Les. Um, we came down in torrential rain and had to stop on the motorway because it was so bad. And uh, he's driving back tonight and wish him great luck. That's a long journey back to Darlington. For those of you who have received the communication tonight, I'm sure that it's been very uplifting for you. For those who haven't, I hope that you still take away that wonderful feeling from this church and that you will tell people about it and tell them that spiritualism isn't anything that's crazy or silly. It's just the reality of life. And that you will come back and see us again very, very soon. Uh, I just want to tell you that next week Elaine Bevan will be with us. Elaine's lovely. She is the um, president of the Southern District Council of the Spiritist National Union. A lovely lady, and I know that we'll have another wonderful night. So I'd like to also say thank you very much. You will have noticed that this evening has been videoed. And uh, this lady and gentleman, Fern and Bill, uh, have videoed Tom Smith last week. They videoed my brother and I all last year when this new act was coming in which affected spiritualism. And you will see in the future uh, these mediums on YouTube, which is drawing attention to spiritualism through YouTube. And they do a wonderful job. So thank you very much, Fernand Bill. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Do have a safe and pleasant journey home. And uh, our thoughts will be with you, Les, as you're driving back. And um, no stopping at the pubs along the way, what was that? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, we look forward to you coming back again next year. Have a safe and pleasant journey home. Good night and God bless.